I first realized that I had sickle cell. I was five years old. I would never think that I would be this strong at 26 with a terminal disease. I'm not just speaking for myself, I'm speaking for other patients who have sickle cell that are just like me all over the world, um, that do live in pain every day. And finding a cure means finding a future and finding a path that we can walk on that's pain-free. Sickle cell disease is a hereditary red blood cell disorder. It's present at birth and extends lifelong, but its hallmark is pain. And it's caused when the red blood cells that are misshapen and damaged block the flow of oxygen and fluids into the smallest blood vessels in the body. That causes pain. So a, a lot of the treatment goes into treating the pain, preventing the pain. How do we lessen these painful episodes and the progressive organ damage that leads to early death? Sickle cell disease was identified in Western medicine over 100 years ago, and it has taken up until now, really, for people to have access to cure and even to disease-modifying therapies. The reason for that really lies in structural racism. There are disparities in funding, and that's really the crux of why we haven't gotten to a cure yet. We've had partnerships with the community and with people with sickle cell disease at Benioff Children's Hospital in Oakland for decades, but it's time now to really continue with the promise where we listen to the voices of people who are affected by the disease and we really attend to the quality of life. I have been a part of UCSF since I was two months old and I'm forever grateful for my nurses and doctors at Children's Hospital. The most challenging part for me in this disease is definitely the pain. Getting out of bed every day is definitely a struggle. Working a job for me has been the hardest thing because it literally feels like my bones are breaking. When I feel a pain crisis coming on, I try to get my pain before it gets me with my meds. When we tell you we are in pain, we are in pain. And we deserve to be treated with respect and dignity. It's only recently in this awakening regarding diversity, equity, inclusion, and how that affects the practice of medicine that we've begun to get the resources we need to develop a new therapy. CRISPR therapy is one of the most exciting innovations that is out there right now. And it began with scientists at UC Berkeley and the Innovative Genomics Institute that's led by Jennifer Doudna and a gifted postdoc in the laboratory, Mark DeWitt, who finalized and optimized the reagents that you need to correct the sickle mutation. Our approach is targeted. We're actually going specifically to the location in the genome where the sickle mutation is located and correcting it, and then reinfuse a sufficient number of corrected stem cells to actually eliminate the disease in every person who's inherited it. With UCSF, UCLA, the UC Berkeley Consortium, we have expertise in manufacturing, in gene editing, in cell biology, and hematology to be able to bring this safely to a clinical trial ready to enroll patients now. This is something that should have happened years ago, and I'm so pleased that here at UCSF and in the University of California system, we've embraced the challenge. We have to really put resources towards people with sickle cell disease who have so long lacked adequate resources to just get the basic care. And a cure can really revolutionize and change everyone's life. Persons who inherit sickle cell disease are now called sickle cell disease warriors. And they're warriors because they're resilient. They're not giving up, and so neither will we. I would love to see a cure in sickle cell. I want to be like a normal young adult. I want to be responsible. I want to have my own money. I want to work a job. I want to be active and hang out with our friends and family. We want to live just like everybody else.